Receiving input from the user is one of the most important parts of making games. Today we will be using the new input system to make the player move and shoot in Unity Dots. First I will create new 2D project using Universal Render Pipeline and make sure that we are using at least Unity version 2022.3. We can jump straight to the package manager and make sure that you download the input system package which you can find in the Unity register packages and once it gives you this warning just hit yes. So in total we will need to download 4 packages, we will need the entities package, entities graphics package, input system package and the mathematics package. So again you can find all of these in the Unity registry. Now we will create the input asset, so right click into your project, create and all the way down we have the input actions asset. In this asset we will be storing all of our key and mouse binds. You also want to select it and make sure that we generate the C sharp class so that we can later work with it in dots. Now we will double click it and we will add our own binds. So first we will add a action map which is like a base for all of these binds. They will be all under the action map. I have named it just action map because we will be using just one. And now we can define all of these different actions. So I will just delete this one and create a new one. The first one will be for movement and under one action you can store multiple keys. So under the movement you can store for example WASD and you can also store the arrows so that you can pick with which one you want to control the game. For the movement I will set the action type to value so that it just gives us the value either minus one, zero or one on all of the axes. The control type we will set it to vector two so that we have two axes. And now we can right click it, add up, down, left and right composite which will let us those four keys. We can delete the empty binding that we have here and to all of these we can select the keys that we want. So just type W and select it for the keyboard. So like that we have a movement action that is a value type and a vector 2 and under it we have WASD keys. And if you want you can also add another composite which could be for the arrows. Just like that. I will add two more actions. One will be for shooting and second one will be just holding the mouse position. For the shooting I selected the action type as value and then we have the left mouse button under it. And for the mouse position it is again value vector 2 and for the bind we have the position of the mouse. And this will be all for setting up the key binds. Now don't forget to save the asset and we will get to making it work with dots. So I will create new input component. This script will be just classic ECS component. If you are not familiar with ECS or dots then feel free to check the beginner's guide that I have on my channel. Into the input component I have added using unity.entities so that we can make sure that it derives from iComponent data and I have added using unity.mathematics so that we can add stuff such as vector2. Instead of class I made it a struct because all of the components have to be structs and it is deriving from iComponent data. Now in here we can define all of the inputs that we have. So I will define float2 for the mouse position, for the movement and just a simple boolean if we are pressing the left mouse button. This component will just be lying in the scene on some singleton entity. What I see other people sometimes do is to create one component for one input. So in my case I would have three components. One would be for the movement, second one for the mouse position and third one for the boolean if we are pressing the left mouse button. But for me this seems like a bit of an overkill to have like 10 components so I will leave it up to you. And now we will create the input system so I will again create new script. In the input system script I am deriving from system base instead of i system because we will need to store a variable for the action asset so we can't use i system. Now what is the difference between using i system and system base? In system base we can't use burst so it will be less optimized but because it is just the input system we don't really care and we wouldn't be able to do it using i system. So some stuff is different. We are using public partial class and not struct 
and all of the voids are protected and override. And again, we are using unit entities, mathematics, and now also the input system. In the void on create, which is pretty much the same as on start, I will set up the input component entity so that the component is just on some singleton entity so that always we will have just one of it and I will also create the input asset. So first I'm checking if the input component already exists on some entity. If not, I'm just creating the entity with the component and I have a variable for the controls, which the name of the class is the same as the name of the input asset that you have defined. So for me, it is just controls and you can see that it automatically created a script with same name. So I'm just creating new controls, storing it in the variable and make sure that you call the enable function, otherwise the inputs are not going to work. And now in update, we can just read all of the inputs from the controls and just save them into the singleton entity, which is holding the input component. To read inputs from the action map is really simple. So I'm just creating new vector three for the move vector. So I'm getting it from the controls for which again, I have the variable. Then I'm accessing the action map. I'm accessing the movement action from which I'm actually reading a value. And for the move vector, it is a vector two. For the mouse position, it is the exact same thing. Instead, we are just going to the mouse position and not to the movement action. And if you are pressing the left mouse button, I'm just converting it to a boolean. So I'm accessing the shoot, reading the float value. And if the value is equal to one, I'm setting the bool is pressing left mouse button to true. Otherwise, I'm setting it to false. And now we can write all of this data into the singleton entity. And to write the data to the entity, it is that simple. So I'm accessing the system API using the set singleton function and creating new input component and setting all the data into it. I just forgot to tell you that in order to use the vector2, we obviously need to also add using Unity Engine. Now, when we play the game and take a look into the entities hierarchy, which you can just open by going to Window, Entities and Hierarchy, down here we can see this entity, which you can see it is holding the input component, which is holding the movement, mouse position and the boolean. And when I try pressing, now I'm pressing, you can see the boolean is on true. When I release, it is on false. And with clicking, it also works. And when I'm pressing WASD, you can see that the movement vector is changing based on the direction that I'm pressing the keys. And I can also press the arrows and it is changing the same way. And the mouse position is also working. So in the bottom left corner, it is on zero, zero. And up here, it is on 1600. So now we are able to read the input. And now let's get to making the player. We will need three scripts for that. First one will be just a component that will be holding the move speed and so on. Second one will be the player altering, which will just allow us to set some variables in the component before we even start the game. And third one will be the player system, which will be managing the movement, rotation and the shooting. The player component is really simple. It is just holding the move speed, shoot cooldown and the bullet prefab. The player altering class is also really simple. It is the same thing that we have done in the beginner's guide. So in the mono behavior class, I have again a reference for the move speed, shoot cooldown and the bullet prefab so that I can just set it in the inspector from start and then all of these values will get transferred to the player component, which is happening in the baker class. So the player baker class is inheriting from the baker of type player altering, which is name of this class. And in it, we have the public override void bake, which is taking in a reference for this class. And first we need to get the player entity so that we can later add component to it. And the component is just new player component. And I'm setting all of the variables in it. So the move speed, I'm getting it from the altering. And the shoot cooldown is done the same way, altering that shoot cooldown and the bullet prefab. Again, we need to use get entity because here it is a game object, but on the player component, we can only use entity. I will just set up the player in Unity so that we know that it works. 
So we'll go to Unity. I will create new sub scene. And under the sub scene, I will just drag my sprite for the player, which I have downloaded from the open games art. Drag it in. And on it, I will add the player altering script. So we can define the move speed, shoot cooldown and the bullet prefab. And as we play the game in the entities hierarchy, we can see the player entity on which we can also see the player component, which indeed is holding the movement speed that we set in the inspector. Now let's get to the player system. The player system is not inheriting from the system base as the input system was. Now it is inheriting from the I system, so we can again make it compatible with burst and have it more optimized. I will begin with the move function, where I will just change position of the player based on the input that we have. I have added quite a lot of stuff into the player system, but it is already simple. I just have few variables for the player entity, input entity, entity manager, player component and input component. And I'm getting all of these variables in the update because later I don't want to be still getting them in the move or in the shoot function. I just want to have them to be accessible all the time. So that's what I'm doing. And in the move function, I'm just getting the player transform from the player entity. To it, I'm then just adding some position, so new float free. I'm getting the movement from the input component. I'm multiplying this by the move speed, which is on the player component. And I'm multiplying this by the delta time. And to make sure that the position of the player is updating, we also need to then set the component back to the player. In my case, Unity was giving me error because I didn't have the sprite render on the same object where I have the script, so the transform component didn't got automatically added. So if you want to have them as two separate objects, you will need to add the transform component to the player with which you want to move. And now, as I'm pressing WASD, you can see the player is moving and arrow keys work as well. So this was really simple. Now let's get to the aiming at mouse. And this again is really simple. So the part for looking at the mouse is this one. So first we need to calculate the direction. So I'm getting the mouse position from the input component and I'm just casting it as a vector 2 because originally it is a float 2. Then from this we need to subtract the screen position of the player. So I'm just getting the camera.main. From it I'm using the word to screen point function and I'm just inputting the transform position of the player. Then, as we have the direction, we can calculate the angle using math 8 and 2 function. So we need to reverse these, that we have direction.y, direction.x, and because this is in radians, we need to use the function math.degrees, and then we can just set the player rotation, so I'm using the angle axis function, the angle is just the angle that we have calculated and the axis is the vector free that forward. And now indeed we can see that as I'm moving with my mouse, the player is still looking at it and I can move with him anywhere I want and he's still looking at the correct position. Quite nice. And last thing that I will do is the shooting. I have created new bullet prefab, assigned it to the player and in the script, in the function shoot, I have also defined a variable for the next shoot time and in the function shoot I'm just checking if we are pressing the left mouse button and the next shoot time is less than the elapsed time. If this is true I am just instantiating the entity and I'm setting the next shoot time to the current time plus the shoot cooldown. And in action as I'm pressing the left mouse button in the entity's hierarchy we can see that each second as I'm pressing it new circle will spawn. Now I will just adjust the position, so it is spawning at the end of the player's rifle, also adjust the rotation and make it move. I have created entity command buffer so that we can later add the components to the bullet. So I'm getting the bullet transform from the entity, I'm then setting the rotation to the player rotation and I'm setting the position to the player position I'm just adding some stuff to it to make sure that it is really at the end of the rifle. And then I'm just setting the component back to the entity using the entity command buffer. And then we also need to call playback on the entity command buffer to make sure that all of the commands get executed. 
So now when I press the left mouse button, you can see that the bullet is spawning at the end of the rifle and now we will just make it move. So I will create bullet component and bullet system. The bullet component is just holding some speed of the bullet so that you can also make them slow over time. Then in the bullet system, I am first accessing all of the entities and storing them into a native array so that I can then loop through all of the entities, check if they have the bullet component, which I'm also adding to them in the player system. So I'm using the entity command buffer to add the component to the bullet entity and the bullet component is just the bullet component and I'm setting the speed to 10. Back to the bullet system. If we find an entity with the bullet component, I need to get its transform and the bullet component so that I can then just increase the position based on the bullet speed, the delta time and the correct direction. And then to make sure that it is updating, I'm just back setting the bullet transform to the entity. And we can see that this works pretty well. I'm able to move anywhere I want. The player is still looking at my mouse. And when I'm pressing the left mouse button, I'm just shooting these bullets. This is a start of new short or maybe long series where I will be creating some game. It may be similar to Vampire Survivors. We will see how it goes. In next parts, we will take a look at handling some collisions and some other stuff that people have been requesting from me. I hope this video was useful. If you have any questions, drop them down to the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in next videos. Bye! Thanks for watching this video till the end. If you are looking for a Unity, C Sharp, or Bolt tutor, then I am here for you, so feel free to send me a message to my Gmail and take a look at my website for more info. I can help you with your personal projects or teach you anything about game development you would want to know. You are welcome.